Uh, Mayor, thanks very much for coming in. Nice to be here. Let's talk a little bit about the Attorney General summary of the Mueller report. You have a copy over there. Right here. I, I have a copy over here. Uh, uh, the president is now saying the Mueller report, in his word, is great, and that Robert Mueller, who spent nearly two years investigating all of this, acted honorably. Do you agree with the president? Uh, not that he acted honorably. I would have to disagree with my client. Tell us why you would disagree well, with, I, you with, know, with your boss, your client, the well, president of the United States. We, we've had, you know, some people see it differently, and maybe I was in the trenches more. I, 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 I have a mixed view of it. I think that it's almost a Jekyll and Hyde situation. I think he did some very fine things, and I think they straightened out a lot of very difficult situations. That whole thing with Cohen lying about uh, uh, there was an agent that supposedly uh, had a tape that show that the president counseled uh, Cohen to lie, they immediately rebutted that because it was completely untrue. I thought that was a noble thing to do, the prosecutorial tradition. I thought their treatment of Manafort was way over the top. I think that shouldn't be allowed. I think the Justice Department should look into taking somebody, put them in solitary confinement, basically telling, telling them what you think they're lying about. And that person could also be telling the truth. And then bringing them back 13 times and letting the guy basically know in his head that if he just says what you want, you're going to get out of solitary consent. sounds to me like you're recommending that the president pardon him. No, I'm not. But you're saying that he was treated unfairly. Well, that's up to the president. I'm not recommending any pardons. I've got nothing to do with pardons, and I've taken the same position on pardons from day one until now, which is no pardons are going to be considered at this time. This would be the wrong time to consider pardons. But that's not my job. My, that's the White House counsel's job and the president's job. The, the reality is that whether you think you should get a pardon or not, he was treated in, in, a, in almost a grossly uh, horrible way. And it shouldn't be allowed just because he's Manafort and people are angry at him. The guy, after all, is not a terrorist and he's not an organized criminal. I'm not sure they get treated that way. And then you he also... He eventually pleaded guilty in addition to being convicted yeah, but in he a never, court of law. Yeah, but he never said what they wanted him to say. And that's why they... He got that big, long sentence. They said he, He's about to go to jail for seven and a half years. I'm not saying he's, I'm not saying he's, not, he's blameless. I'm telling you, he was treated horribly. And he was treated in a way that's very, very dangerous because a prosecutor comes very close to suborning perjury when you do that. You put a certain amount of pressure on somebody. But I, I did this job, you know, for 19 years. There's a point at which you know I'm putting too much pressure on. And I may get what I want to hear, but it may not be true. But if somebody was stealing millions and millions of dollars from American taxpayers, not filing tax returns the way you're supposed to file, when you were a prosecutor, wouldn't you go, you, wouldn't you go after that individual? He has to reimburse would, the government I, for, what, $11 no, million? No, dollars. Of course I'd go after him, but in a proportionate way. I wouldn't raid his house. I would not uh, put him in solitary confinement for eight months. That's totally crazy. Most terrorists aren't in solitary confinement. This is a Weissman inspired deal. Read the Sydney. So Powell. let me ask you this. Why, why do you think, May I finish why do you think the president believes well, you that Mueller me. acted honorably? You gotta let me finish the sentence. Please. Sidney Powell wrote a book called Empire. I've forgotten the name of the book, but it's a book about the abuse of power. Two chapters are devoted to Andrew Weissman, who was his chief henchman. He was one of the prosecutors working Enron, uh, with Enron. Mueller. Oh, but he was handling the Manafort case. Yeah. And he's the one that did the questioning. Uh, 13 times, back and forth. The guy was in solitary. Uh, they contended that he knew that uh, the president and the candidate had, had knowledge of the meeting with that Russian woman. He contended, I don't have that knowledge. At the Trump Tower in New York. Correct. Each time they would tell him, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying. They'd send him back to solitary, bring him back again. Now, they did the same thing with Jerome Corsi, who refused to read their script. We happened to have those, that material sent to us. Right. It was kind of a big deal at the time that it happened. And Corsi was being told to lie. So there were things... So you disagree that, clearly with the president on whether Mueller acted yeah, but here, honorably. But here's what I point. think. Here's yeah. what I think. But hold I on think, a second. Hold on. Let me get to the next question. Yeah. Then you can tell me what you think. <laughs> uh, does the president accept the attorney general's characterization in his letter? You have a copy of this. I have a copy that Russia did, in fact, interfere in the U.S. presidential election in 2016. I, I, don't, I have no reason to believe he disagrees He's with You've never it. discussed that with the president? The president is... The uh, president doesn't disagree that Russians interfered, what he disagrees with uh, is that he had anything to do with it. But the president did, anyway. listen to what the president but said in Helsinki after he met with uh, 
you know, with the Russian leader Putin. But that's kind listen, of switching with the, the no, headline. No, 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 listen, the listen headline to this. Here, the headline here Hold on is a second. Hold that on. After, after, after two years of saying collusion, 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 collusion on this network. But, uh, hold on a second. He, he was the, the whole purpose no collusion. of Mueller's, the whole purpose of you Mueller's investigation. You agree he was exonerated on collusion, don't you? Well, of course he was. That's what, that's what it says here. So didn't, wasn't the reporting. They, they could not wasn't, establish, wasn't the they could not establish well, wasn't the conspiracy the or links. But that but, was the premise. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Wasn't the reporting, uh, quite unfair for the last two and a half years about collusion? Adam Schiff saying he had evidence of collusion? <laughs> Listen to Can what the stop? whole, the whole purpose... And the, the whole purpose for that. The, the whole purpose of the Mueller investigation in the letter that the then acting Attorney General Rod Rosenstein wrote to Mueller uh, on, on May 17th, uh, 2017, was to ensure a full and thorough investigation of the Russian government's efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election... They investigated that. They confirmed that. That's in the Attorney General's summary Good. of the Mueller report. I but the, no but I, the question is, and it's always intrigued me, why the president, maybe alone, refuses to still accept that. Listen to what he said in Helsinki. Listen to this. My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. So, I mean, that's clearly the whole objective of this report, why the Russians interfered in the U.S. presidential election. And the U.S. intelligence community, as you know, they concluded they had three goals, the Russians. To denigrate Hillary Clinton and harm her electability and potential presidency, mm -hmm. help Donald Trump's election chances, and undermine public faith in U.S. democracy. Why won't the president accept what I his own no intelligence community him. tells him. I, since he has now said that this is a very good report, and I agree in the main that it is a very, very good summary, uh, I have no reason to believe he doesn't accept those. He, I mean, he, he read it. He didn't object to it. I mean, I went over this letter in great detail with him, and it, the only thing we have any issue with is the special counsel punting the decision on obstruction to the attorney general, the deputy attorney general, and OLC. And I, I, I think he should have made that decision one way A lot of people but, agree with you on that, but, that but, he shouldn't have punted on that. He should have made a specific recommendation. I, I, also, I also remember, this it also does not exonerate him. Well, I'm, I'm going to get to that. never say that. I'm going I'm 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 to get that's to that in a moment. A, that's kind of a, close to an improper statement. The, uh, uh, the attorney general, in his letter, the four-page mm -hmm. letter, uh, he quotes Mueller as saying that the investigation, I'm saying that, I'm quoting now from the letter, did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or co coordinated with the Russian government, which, which is obviously what you want to hear. So is there an innocent explanation, Mayor, why so many Trump associates were meeting with Russians during the campaign? It wasn't that many. They were meeting there, with there other people. 16. There you see them well, on the there screen. There probably a 50 that were meeting with people from Great Britain or people from France or... Well, for, Great no, Britain and France are allies of the United the States. Time, Russia is not. But at the time that was happening, nobody had any idea that this would be anything about collusion. Some of those meetings were... Uh, th didn't General Flynn, like, shake hands with a guy at the convention well, that walked past him? Uh, they shook General hands Flynn, for, who was the president's national security advisor, I know, he, had and I, I, he pleaded guilty to lying about his conversations with the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kislyak. George Papadopoulos also pleaded guilty to lying about his Russian contacts. He was a national security aide to the president during the campaign. Paul Manafort, man you, you say was treated unfairly, he lied about his in interactions with Konstantin Kalimnik, uh, who had ties to Russian intelligence. Uh, all these people lied about their Russian contacts. None of the 16 ever went to the oh. FBI, hold on a second, okay. and reported the, the contacts they had right. with the FBI, uh, well, with the Russians. I mean, at the time that it happened. Right. Well, if, well if there, would, there wouldn't have been any reason to do it at the time. That, there wouldn't, there wouldn't, if if a hostile adversary is coming to you and saying, we have uh, information that can help that you a, win the election time, time and hurt Hillary time, Clinton, time, time, time isn't that something you should that tell is, the that FBI is the about? That's information that General Flynn got. General Flynn's conversation, if you believe what has been written, was about, uh, was about sanctions, right? And he, and he failed to disclose that, and he misled the vice president. It had nothing to do with... Had nothing to do with dirty information on Hillary. I, I asked a second. Yeah, what, and it took, took place after the election, so whether he told the truth or didn't tell the truth, got nothing to do with collusion.